Hi, how are you? It's Finnevar here and today I want to show you some ideas how to decorate a wooden box. You can use these techniques on other uh, surfaces as well and of course I hope you're going to have a lot of fun. First of all, I take my wooden box and I want to add texture on the top of it. Because I'm planning to use Art Basics modeling paste, I can apply it directly on the wood. There is no need to add a primer. I take my stencils, Victorian tiles, and I apply the coat of the modeling paste through the stencil on the top lid of my box. After removing the stencil, the pattern is beautifully visible and dimensional, and now you can dry it with the heat gun to make sure it's going to be perfectly ready for our next steps. Once the surface is dry, you can start painting your wooden box without worry to damage the uh, stenciling pattern. I watered down my uh, liquid acrylic paint, Prussian blue, to turn it into half transparent, um, almost like wood stain effect color. If you would like to see the details of the wood after painting, uh, watering down your acrylic paint is a great solution. Uh, liquid acrylics are transparent paints anyway, so the effect is even easier to get. And applying uh, the paint with the bigger brush and adding extra water makes this whole process super fun and easy. I apply the paint on <laughs> each side of the box and after drying I can always add a little bit extra layers if I want to. It's really up to you how far you would like to go. Soon my box is painted inside and outside and I can continue with the next layer. I would love to make a beautifully sparkly and deliciously metallic top of the box with the texture on it, so I'm going to apply metallic flakes. For this product the best uh, glue is gilding glue, the uh, product we made with Prima Marketing, especially for this purpose. And I take a portion of the gilding glue and I apply it on the top of the lid, making sure I go in every corner and I cover the whole lid with one good layer. Gilding glue has a special formula which works really well with the metallic flakes and it will give you a long uh, working time. So the most important is after application you have to dry it until it will turn transparent and then it will be ready for applying your metallic flakes. Once I'm happy with the application on the top lid, I want to add a little bit of the metallic effect in the corners of the box. So I take a bit more of my gilding glue and I apply it uh, with my smaller brush in the parts of the box where I would love to see metallic touches. You can see the gilding glue is dry and ready for application of the flakes because it turns transparent. Now it is time to play with my metallic flakes. I've got sparkling set, which is a mixture of silver and gold. Metallic flakes are very thin and delicate and you don't need to put many layers, just one is enough. So try to take a small portion of the metallic flakes and stick it on the top of the gilding glue. Later on you will be able to brush off the excess. I try to mix the silver and gold metallic flakes to cover the whole lid and to make sure my uh, 3D effect uh, made with modeling paste and stencil is beautifully covered.
I let my flex sit a little bit on the lid and then I can continue the application going on the other parts of the box to add extra metallic touches. It's really a lot of fun, <laughs> it's a little bit messy, but the results are really stunning. If you'd like to save the leftovers of the flakes, you can um, move the whole process into a small box or on the tray, so it's easier to catch all of the flying um, flakes and uh, put them back in the container. Once I'm happy with the application, I can now take a larger, a little bit harder brush and brush off all of the excess. This way, the um, layer of the metallic flakes is going to be even thinner and you're going to see all the details of the wood and the details of the stenciling even better. It's really rewarding to see all that happen and I have to say this is... <laughs> Of course, a bit messy, but uh, such a great result. After brushing off all of the metallic flakes, I try to clean my space a little bit and then I'm ready for working on the composition. My plan is to combine my mechanical embellishments and uh, at the same time elements I made using molds. So the resin element is the uh, a bust of the lady and uh, mechanicals are flowers and gears. And to put the whole composition together, I use the same Art Basics um, modeling paste. This product is very sticky. So it works not only as a, a great product for stenciling, but also as a glue. Modeling paste is flexible and permanent and white after drying. So uh, in some of the projects, it's kind of important to take off all the excess. But in my case, I know everything will be painted anyway. So I don't have to worry about keeping every step of the way clean. I pick up the excess with a small brush and I keep going with the composition. To make it easier, you can dry your composition from time to time using the heat gun, so this way uh, your elements will stay in place. When I use the modeling paste or gel mediums for gluing, I use quite big portions of the paste or gel to make sure all of the layers are able to stick to each other. Once I'm happy with the main composition, I can think about adding some finishing touches. And for this step, I have uh, some acrylic pebbles uh, with the beautiful diamond cut. They are a set that I made for Prima Marketing. And I use the same modeling paste to stick them in the selected part of my project. I want them to uh, be these uh, like happy accents around um, my main focal point and they're going to fill the gaps in a nice way and adding nice detail. When I work on this step, I try to keep in mind the balance of the whole project and at the same time, I don't want to take away too much attention from the beautiful background we created with the stenciling and uh, metallic flakes. So I keep my crystals closer to the middle of the project.
Once I'm done with gluing, I dry everything completely and then it is time to start painting. First, I need to prime my elements and for this step, I've got Art Basics uh, White Heavy Gesso and I'm going to use it to cover all of my embellishments, trying to avoid most of the metallic background. After applying the first coat of uh, gesso, I dry it a bit and if I feel that I would like to add a little bit more, I can repeat the step. That is especially important on the darker elements such as uh, petals or leaves. Next, we are back to the color of my choice, the Prussian blue liquid acrylic paint. I'm going to use it to paint a beautiful blue shade all around my embellishments on the top lid. I use a lot of water, I use the water sprayer to make sure the colors float and um, I apply quite a generous portion of the paint. Liquid acrylics are permanent after drying and they are uh, semi-transparent but very strongly pigmented so you have to be quite careful with the portion you are going to use it's better to take a smaller brush and control how much of the paint you are using so this way it's uh, not going to be overpowering i keep playing with water and uh, I, I use my baby wipe to remove the excess of the watered down paint and this way i uh, get beautiful shades of turquoise blue on the top of my metallic flakes. Once I'm happy with the results, I dry everything with the heat gun and uh, this way the colors get a little bit more subtle. Later on I can continue similar uh, idea on the top of my box. Uh, this way the metallic corners of the box are going to get a bit more blended into the color of the wood. In the next step I keep painting and drying, painting and drying until my metallic um, uh, accents are a little bit blended with the turquoise uh, background and this way everything comes together in a very pretty way. Once I'm done with the sides of the box, it's time to go back to the top. I would love to bring back the details of my composition, so I will work on the dry brushing and highlights. I take Art Basics White Heavy Gesso and uh, I dip my brush in it and then remove the excess on the paper towel. For dry brushing, you really need a small portion of the paint or gesso on the top of your brush. Now, I go over my embellishments, but I try to touch mostly the tops. I don't repaint completely. I try to dry brush the top layers of my embellishments. Every time when I dip the brush in the gesso, I try to remove the excess 
and I continue with more layers of the white on the top of my blue embellishments. This way everything gets a beautiful white wash and we get like blue shadows and the white tops. That is really beautiful dimensional look. Dry brushing requires several layers to look nice, so it's better to work in smaller steps and dry each layer, so this is easier for you to get the results you like. After applying few layers of the white gesso and drying it, it's time for extra highlights and details. And for this purpose, I've got a mica powder set called Pearls and Crystals, and I'm planning to use it in the combination with the clear wax. This technique is a perfect solution for those of you who've got several colors of mica powders at home and you would like to use them in a creative way. So if you'd like to use them as a paint, you can mix them with water to make a, a spray paint or with fluid medium to make acrylic paint or like today, you can mix it with uh, clear wax to create uh, your own metallic wax uh, product. I selected one of the colors and now I mix it with a small portion of the uh, Art Alchemy uh, Antiquing Wax clear and this way I make a small uh, custom-made portion of the uh, delicate vintage pearl color wax. I take off the excess of the wax uh, of my brush and now I can use it to add extra beautiful vintage highlights on the top of my composition. I really love this uh, like vintage pearl color because it is uh, adding this extra, mm, I would say, vintage feeling to it so my box uh, gets more of the antique look and at the same time you can still see all of the details and it goes beautifully with the blue background if you'd like you can add extra touches using your finger as well for example in the corners of the lid or in the parts where you would like to um, get more control over the application so it's a really fun and you can see you uh, can add it um, in a really thin layer if you would like to or you can apply it a little bit thicker in multiple layers using the brush There was quite a lot of wax on the main composition, so I removed the excess and now I can continue with adding delicate touches on the top of my metallic flakes. It's really a lot of fun and this way of uh, using my mica powders is a creative and encouraging way to explore what can the products really um, uh, do for you. So you can try and mix and match at home with uh, the products you already have. To get even more saturation in selected parts, I use the uh, leftovers of my paper towel with a bit of the um, custom-made metallic wax 
and I wrap the corners of the box. This way, the color of the wood and the metallic accents are all blending together uh, through the vintage pearl wax. And uh, this way, you can also highlight the edges of the box or the part where the lid is uh, closing. It's really up to you how much of the product you would like to apply. Wax is great for working with the wood because it's also like a protective coat. So I go on the edges, I go on the edges of the lid to make the accents and to um, smoothen the whole look a bit. And this way uh, the box gets really nice finishing touch. Once I'm done with the waxing, I take a little bit more of the Prussian blue paint and I make the shadows uh, in the composition a little bit darker and deeper. Of course, the paint is not going to work well on the top of the wax, but this is just enough to uh, get a little bit of extra color, especially when we are trying to uh, get just a bit of an extra shadow. Uh, water is going to help it blend in and to go into spaces and cavities and after drying it's going to be really beautiful look. Once everything is dry, it is time to work a little bit on the extra touches. I figured I would love to get a bit more contrast, so now I take a white pearl color of the uh, mica powder and I create a small portion of the custom made wax again. I would like to get really white color to get the highlight on the face of my um, lady in the composition, so this way color is going to be a little bit lighter and the face is going to stand out a little bit more. I apply the custom made wax <laughs> directly on the face just using my finger and you can see the highlights are getting much more dramatic. Application with the finger is uh, staying a little bit more on the tops than with the brush and this way there's kind of a gradation of the colors as well. I really like the look, it, I think it is a um, lovely balance between vintage and white and this uh, white pearl corresponds beautifully with the silver For the final touches, I cover the composition and I splatter a little bit of the uh, Prussian blue liquid acrylic paint on the top to get some dynamic looking uh, <laughs> splats of the paint and I think it is something that really adds a lot of dynamic and magical look to most of the projects. So if you are feeling that ah, maybe something is missing in the project you are working on, this is a really good solution. To make it uh, match and, wor and, and work similar way, I use a uh, white pearl uh, mica powder mixed with water and a little bit of the fluid medium to add splatters on the sides of the box. Fluid medium is going to make our mica powder permanent and um, this way we've got a lovely metallic finish. You can play with your splatters as much as you like. It's really great uh, way to add the extra detail. 
And so here it is, uh, the blue, silver and gold box with the uh, beautiful texture and composition on the top is ready. Perfect for jewelry, great idea for a gift box or maybe you'd like to use it for tea bags or your favorite little treasures. I hope you enjoy that and I hope you're going to try some of the techniques in your own projects. Thank you for watching!